as we all know that heart failure is progressively increasing in the population and we the cardiologists are facing a tremendous challenge in treatment of these heart failure patients many of these patients progressively they get worse and they are hospitalized they are rehospitalized some of them require device implantation like cardiac resynchronization therapy or even intracardiac defibrillator nevertheless the complications progressively increases but th there is a further challenge of keeping them active over a period of times interestingly nowadays the pharmacological therapy profoundly increasing to improve the life quality of these heart failure patients we are aware of the drugs like beta blocker we are aware of the drugs like arni even ace inhibitors vasodilators and in this armamentarium of pharmacotherapy for heart failure patients there is a new addition which we are going to talk this afternoon so we know that cyclin uh, cyclic guanylase uh, stimulator is of profound importance because it enhances the nitric oxide level inside the myocardial cell and therefore it tries to keep the myocardial cell functioning and the heart failure patient they get improvement because of this riosigot was a drug which actually is a cyclic guanylase stimulator and therefore it improves the heart failure patient there is further enhancement or further improvement of this molecule to a, a newer generation called verisigot which is again has been found to be extremely helpful for heart failure patients today we are going to talk about it with me my colleague dr dilip kumar a very accomplished cardiologist is going to share his views about this new drug of cyclic guanylase stimulator in the treatment of heart failure dr dilip kumar so thank you sir and uh, hello everyone so we are going to see uh, virasi goat in our uh, indian market maybe next 6 months to 8 months and that is what uh, it's making more important uh, the entire discussion about virasi goat and this molecule has very very promising future what it seems with the recent evidences basically uh, you uh, you told that it acts on cyclic gmp pathway which is uh, important for cellular functions and uh, Uh, in conditions like heart failure and arterial dysfunction the no becomes less right. that's why cyclic gmp production is you know altered and diminished right so uh, this alternate pathway which is going to increase like guanylate cyclase stimulated and increase the cyclic gmp and minimally cellular functions are regained okay. and this was a basically untapped territory and untapped pathway a uh, mechanism in heart failure therapy right so there are very exciting times we have this another addition of virus guat which has a lot of promise so which essentially means let us say if we go back like when we have been talking about heart failure management right from consensus trial before that vf trial then consensus 1 then consensus 2 later on dapa hf then paradigm hf now is there any such data or any such huge trial which substantiated the fact that virus guat could be of important use in the management of heart failure so we had this is not a very new trial it, uh, it came uh, a couple of years back a uh, victoria trial and right it really created a lot of you know noise and uh, buzz among the uh, you know uh, physicians and cardiologist so victoria trial was uh, done on those patients who were having worsening heart failure what do you mean by worsening heart failure worsening heart failure means like those patients with ejection fraction less than 45% hfrf patients essentially and who were not stable like within 3 months or 6 months they were admitted for heart failure hospitalization uh, in the hospital or it was needed to increase their iv diuretics oh my god so on opd basis even so these were basically the uh, three group of patients what about the, the anti pro bnp was it elevated so there was a criteria of anti pro bnp and the mean anti pro bnp in this victoria trial the uh, patients who were enrolled in was 2800 oh my god It's so it was high. compared to the dapa heart failure and uh, Paradigm. The, the, the paradigm heart failure trial where it was something like 1300 and 1600 so this was 2800 so these are yeah, really really sick patients and it showed a significant difference in the outcome outcome is primary endpoints of 
heart failure hospitalization and uh, cardiovascular death even mortality yeah so, so cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization primary endpoints so it's a significant reduction with p of 0.02 so it was quite but how you you come is it a, is it a drug which has to be given as a tablet form or orally or is it kind of only to be hospital, patient in the hospital no it, it's a oral drug it's uh, it started uh, from 2.5 mg daily doses and then gradually escalated to 10 mg just day. like uh, beta blockers and oh, right. arni it has to be escalated over two weeks as we uh, and the good thing is uh, it doesn't have much side effects safe it's very safe and uh, safety was uh, as good as as equal to what we saw in placebo so even hypotensive uh, episodes uh, other side effects were comparable to placebo so so in your view uh, uh, dr dilip kumar what kind of heart failure patient would be profoundly benefited with bariatric what therapy is it a therapy stand alone or it has to be in combination with arni or even uh, you know the dafagliflozin or empagliflozin on beta blocker so very pertinent point sir so the trial uh, victoria trial was done in those patients who were optimally managed for heart failure so all, most of these patients were on therapy although the compliance was not good so triple therapy was uh, uh, something around 14 15% only and uh, 45% of the patients were monotherapy but essentially it should be added in those patients where we have given patients a uh, four cornerstone of therapy of heart failure patients like uh, beta blockers rni acetone inhibitors and mras and so then it has to be added if the patient is worsening right so and and when you add this drug can you introduce the drug as an opd patient or or opd basis or for the introduction of the drug patient should be in the hospital what is the criteria so it can be added on the uh, opd basis something like those patients who were requiring only iv diuretic escalation on opd basis they were given no like the, even we are prescribing arni even opd basis so increase the dose from 50 to 100 to 200 uh, opd basis yeah, we just is, monitor this is a opd prescription yeah so do you need to monitor the electrolytes uh, sodium potassium urea creatinine while the patient is on very sick it's not specific to this drug as a normal format and what how we follow these patients of heart failure the same way we have to go but is it safe to introduce the drug in chronic kidney disease patient so in victoria trial they included patients up to 15 gfr of 15 oh it's so, almost end stage yeah so stage 3 stage 4 ckd street can be used which is very safe so obviously we understood today that very sick what is coming to indian market in 6 months time it probably uh, going to create a huge sensation for heart failure patients and we the physician the cardiologist would certainly be comfortable in to manage this uh, challenging volume of heart failure patients in the community so it's a new armamentarium a very promising drug uh, is it very expensive by the way we will come to know if uh, once it is launched right. so, so we do not know the cost market. as yet let it let, let it come to the indian market i'm sure that the indian patients will be benefited by whatever the drug may be even arni and other drugs are uh, are patients can afford because at the end of the day it is a life so nothing cannot be more costly than life i'm sure that very sick what also would be a great drug a new drug an extremely helpful drug for these patients of heart failure so that they can continue to remain Uh, productive in the community and we the cardiologists feel comfortable in using this drug along with the other drugs for the heart failure management in 2022 after this we are also going to talk about a new uh, therapy for the management of uh, lipid abnormalities so we know that people are actually focusing towards low density lipoprotein in the management of this lipidemia but we never ignored that amongst the risk factor one of the important risk factor in addition to the lipid and ldl and the ratio between hdl and ldl is lipoprotein little a lipoprotein little a has been found to be of extremely uh, important risk factor for patients of coronary artery disease especially the younger individual especially the patients with with background of family history of ischemic heart disease but we do not have any drug to treat or we do not know even whether or not by reduction of a lipoprotein little a we can actually improve the outcome of ischemic heart disease in these patients so today we are also going to talk a little about this new drug for the lipoprotein little a management again dr dilip kumar what are your thoughts about let us talk about little bit of statin let us talk about the drugs the management of statin uh, drugs like statin and the newer drugs for other drugs for the management of uh, lipid abnormalities along with the new drug coming up 
for the management of Dr. Putin Little Lake. Yes, sir. Dr. Dilip Kumar. Yes, sir. Precisely uh, what we uh, want to talk today is about LPA and uh, its significance and any drug which is now coming up which is going to hit directly on LPA. So we have seen that uh, if we reduce uh, LDL by 40 mg per DL approximately, then we are going to reduce mortality by 10%. So it's right. a hard evidence and which is well established. Then we have drugs like ejetimibe, uh, which can uh, add to statin and bring down the LDL level, you know, within the goals of uh, kind of dead, you know, guidelines. And then we have a PCSK inhibitors, which has given us a lot of insight into the uh, LDL and LPA kind of management. So statins reduces the LDL, but it rather increases the uh, uh, LPA. Oh, and right. LPA in PCSK9 trials like uh, Odyssey trial and Fourier trial, they have shown that even if the LDL is less than 70, a high LPA was predictor of adverse events. Yes, that's what we've seen in our practice, especially and the younger individuals. Yes, and, and this trial also showed us that if you reduce LPA by 5, we are going to reduce overall cardiovascular events by 6.5%. 6 but we do not have any, any drug which can specifically reduce, like you know that nicotinic acid and nicotine, a lot, lot of nicotine acid uh, derivative were tried for reduction of life in little and none of them actually worked. Yes, sir. So but PCSK9 reduces LPA by 15-20%. Yes. Other hand, we uh, for this entire you know understanding that LPA is independent risk factor and statin rather increases it and PCSK is not affordable by many and PCSK acts there and reduces cardiovascular mortality further. So there's a new uh, you know research on a drug called pelacarsin and pelacarsin is basically a, uh, antisense oligonucleotide against uh, 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 LPA and it has shown that it reduces LPA by 50 20 percent. Oh, right, okay. So, it's very specific in uh, reduction of lipoprotein little a for lipid management or lipid abnormalities. So, what exactly it does? What is the evidence that we have today? Yes, we have evidence like Horigen trial, uh, it was there and it showed that it, it significantly reduces uh, LPA. It doesn't act much on LDL, there is not much significant difference, but it does reduce, uh, you know, decrease uh, bad cholesterol like APOB, APOB 100. So oh, even APOB, APOB 100 is yeah. also reduced. So they are all kind of a culprit, cholesterol culprit for prediction of ischemic heart disease. So if it acts not only on lipoprotein little a, it also acts on APOB and APOB 100. Yes. Oh, which is which is phenomenal. So sort of, sort of uh, how to introduce? Will you uh, add uh, to the uh, to in addition to statin, or these patient will not be on statin only on pelacarsin? So only pelacarsin is not a you know a right way to go ahead. So statin has to be there as right. a first line management, and then we see uh, even ESC recommends that uh, at least once uh, LPL levels will be checked, and becomes more important in Asian subcontinent our population yes, because true. we are more prone and LPA was once considered as our important. risk factor yes, for true. Asians. Yes, yes. So absolutely. we should absolutely. check our uh, LPA, and if our LPA is definitely more than 50 or more than 70. I think these molecules are going to... Yeah, more than uh, 70, I, I, I found in many Indian patients they have, yes. which is true. So, this pelacarsin would be of extremely helpful for those patients with a lipoprotein little a elevated status. But the, again, the question is that pelacarsin has to be introduced as a, at a primary level, is it a pri under primary prevention or even for those patients who had a previous ischemic heart disease or even bypass surgery or angioplasty or heart attack. What are the current yeah, definitely those patients who are having uh, previous cardiovascular disease, they are at the highest risk. Right. So these patients are more vulnerable to have another episodes in future. And if they have got a heavier LPA level, then absolutely they should be targeted with uh, statins and then pelagarsin or drug like PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, so it is basically an addition and this is also an injectable form. Okay. It's, it's it has to be only like once. Once, uh, how? What is how the schedule like? The schedule was, uh, you know, uh, different schedules were uh, basically evaluated. So monthly injections, uh, weekly injections, bi-weekly injections were evaluated. So we are yet to see the you know final and uh, pathway and fin uh, final dosing sequences. But Correct. it is injectable, which is uh, just like a PCSK9, and then uh, maybe monthly injections probably. Sure. It will come in. So as you all know, that in the uh, lipid management. Uh, protocol, we have been using statin, we have been using uh, PCSK9 inhibitor, ezetimibe, and now lipoprotein little a, an important uh, risk factor, especially for ischemic heart disease, must be addressed and we did not have any drug. Probably pelagarsin is going to be of profound help in the management of lipid. We do not have the 
dose schedule as yet. We do not have the exact protocol how it has to be used. But we must be aware that lipoprotein little a, which is a known and recognized risk factor for ischemic heart disease, more so probably in Indian subcontinent. Today, we have a drug called pelacarsin. Eventually, it will come up to take care of this great abnormality. So, I request that continue to listen to Medica Cardio Talk and I am sure uh, we the cardiovascular team of Medica Super Specialty Hospital Kolkata will continue to update you on the newer concept, the newer knowledge and recent uh, therapy in the management of heart diseases. With me and Dr. Dilip Kumar, we thank you very much for listening to our program. Hope to see you in Medica Cardio Talk. Steve. Till then, stay healthy, stay well.